Yeah, manufacturing architecture, that's what uh, prefabrication is about. Um, we've um, done a lot of work over the years and um, um, all sorts of buildings from uh, high-rise uh, high buildings like this to um, smaller, more intricate projects. Uh, but they, uh, they all have something in common. An individual building traditionally has been something, you go to a site, you put a fence around it and you set up a, a factory, in effect, an on-site factory for the fabrication of a particular building. And when it's finished, you dismantle the factory and you go away. Uh, you tend to do a lot of things on site. In fact, you, uh, you do virtually everything on site. Uh, but in recent years, with the pressures of uh, financial pressures and the scale of things, there's been a trend to try to take things off site and uh, to maximise the benefits of off site construction. I think there's an inexorable drive to reduce on site processes and uh, pre-make, pre-assemble and transport to site as much as possible. And in the long term, this is going to result in construction becoming a, a branch of the manufacturing industry. Uh, the, a major driver is the, um, efficiency. And if you look at this diagram, which is from The Economist, it's uh, in the American market. <clears throat> but uh, it's essentially the story of construction everywhere. The productivity gains that we see in other areas are just not achievable with traditional methodologies on site because you're limited with what material, the, the, just the logistics of bringing all, everything, concentrating it onto one block of land to build, um, to build a, a building and the safety issues. I think a major part of that, um, the construction flatlining productivity has got to do with the, the increased safety and care that we apply to sites, which of course is very good for schools, because um, who wants to hurt people? Um, but in manufacturing, when you're in controlled areas, uh, in a factory undercover, and you have the methodologies of um, repetition and other things uh, bringing to bear, you can start to move that curve upwards, just like manufacturing um, um, has moved upwards, whereas construction has, um, has lagged significantly behind. Uh, Prefabrication is, is, um, is not a new thing, and it's ubiquitous, uh, everything from uh, reinforcing cages to big steel components. Everybody's trying to make things in a way that um, you do. You bring them on site, and essentially the site is about assembly. Rather than construction, it's about assembling uh, prefabricated components of all sorts of sizes. So the question is, how far can this process be taken, and how do you take it? Uh, services are, is another area. Um, we've, we've had a lot of experience with prefabricated volumetric construction. We've built a number of buildings through a company called uh, UB, which is unitized construction. Essentially, the idea was to break buildings down into components, units that could be uh, manufactured off-site, brought to site. And um, the, uh, the early work was about pre-finishing things in monocoque structures, uh, waterproof structures, which have got inherently um, good torsional structural capabilities and to bring them, and to bring them on site and build buildings out of, out of these buildings, out of these um, modules, boxes, whatever you want to call them. Um, we also tried to apply some of these um, ideas to large-scale construction, which is, of course, much more difficult. And um, so we, we've, uh, on a building called Australia 108, we developed, um, uh, together with Robert Bird Group, a series of steel components and um, pre... Um, uh, Pre-made formwork with reinforcing. These are the red ones, the shear walls, including the core. Was um, the objective was to uh, pre-make these large panels, put the reinforcing in it, and it's permanent formwork which you could just fill in on site. Essentially, um, it's a steel structure. There were assembly stations on the ground where, fa including facades, could be built, and we invested, investigated ideas of hoisting these things in a way that was not just from a single crane, but it was a bit, um, um, 
it could be computerized and given coordinates so these things could be dropped in in the right place and in the same in the right orientation. Um, that building is under construction at the moment and is being built completely conventionally. It's that was a series of ideas which we explored, but we're not going to get to that extent overnight. It'll be it'll be in baby steps. Um, unitized building. Um, has a factory in Shanghai that uh, built a project in, we have a, it has a partnership in Shanghai. Uh, this hotel was designed by Woha, architects out of Singapore, and it was, uh, UB won the project in tender and we built it and uh, it was occupied middle of this year. The, the factory in Shanghai is, um, you can see it's very clean, but look at the space that it requires for volumetric construction. There's not a lot of, um, there's not, the capacity of sort of volumetric construction is a bit limited because these are big things. But yes, you can fit them out, the complication of the services, the materials, um, and they can be fitted out into a very high standard and a very high quality. Uh, Woha Architects are one of the um, premium, one of the most talented groups in the world, and uh, they are very particular about finishes and um, how things come together. So the standard of these, uh, these units that were transported from Shanghai by ship to Singapore and installed had to be, um, had to match their expectations. The, the, uh, the monocoque structures are impervious, um, well, they're waterproof. Um, they need to be Singapore, it rains uh, constantly in, in big cloud bursts. Uh, the project was at, at the airport, so we, uh, people could only work at night. And essentially, the building was constructed, well, installed, uh, built in Shanghai over a period of six months and installed uh, on site about uh, 26 days, I think it was. Uh, each box was completely finished with a component, with a piece of the uh, high performance facade attached, all plumbing points, air conditioning, uh, and, and all the materials were uh, complete. Uh, then there were a series of walkways and um, catwalks fitted on site. It took another three, uh, three months approximately to make all the connections on site. There's a lot of plant that goes into a hotel. Most of it was on the, on the roof. Um, it's an extension to an existing Crown Plaza hotel at the airport. And um, the site was absolutely tiny. Um, and it even came to leave it over, over a couple of uh, driveways. So uh, prefabrication was a really good way to go, both for speed and to take the pressure off the circulation at the airport. And to achieve, it's, you can achieve the same standard that you can achieve uh, on site by doing it, but you don't have, um, actually you, you should be able in, um, to do better because you're under, in a, controlled, in a controlled environment in a factory where you can supervise and work with people more closely rather than in a building of 250 rooms where you have to find the trades and chase people up and down through a, a normal structure. Um, we're currently working at an, on another hotel in Mona, um, in Tasmania, uh, quite a well-known museum at this stage. Um, we've designed the whole project and now there's a need for accommodation on site. Uh, we actually worked with uh, James Murray Parks and his group on, on the structure. And this, um, the, the concept here illustrates a compression arch and um, the, the uh, Irwin Consulting, Irwin Consult were part of it and Phil Gardner and his team. The project evolved and moved um, structurally to, um, to a suspension structure with struts um, and Slowly, we converted the lift cores and other things into a totally steel structure, whereas multiplex, for instance, is, they come from a concrete structure, so they prefer to do jump forms and uh, do as much in concrete. This has now become 
a totally prefab uh, building, a uh, steel building. Now, I showed you a volumetric building just a minute ago. Um, volumetric is one, one way to, to do buildings, but it's always a mix. Uh, the previous hotel had concrete cores and had a concrete transfer floor that we put the, the volumetric uh, units into. This one requires a slightly, um, well, a different approach. So prefab is a methodology. There is no one solution. Volumetric isn't a solution. Panels are not a solution. There is no such thing as uh, one thing that will cover all bases. This is a good example of, um, of a combination of structural steel. Uh, the volumetric component consists of bathrooms, uh, bathroom modules, two bathrooms back to back, and the rooms consist of a series of panels, uh, floor and wall panels that all um, click together uh, to form the particular solution to this project. Um, the, uh, the bathroom unit is in the middle, you can see, and the, uh, there's a room on each side. Now, it's volumetric construction is very suitable when you have intensive fit-outs, as in bathrooms and hotel rooms. When you have a bedroom, which is substantially just full of furniture, plasterboard and full of furniture, it's not economical to make that volumetrically. So by, by recognising the strengths and of the different approaches and breaking up a building um, to best suit um, a manufacturing methodology, you can actually fine tune the economics and um, start to uh, work with a repertoire of parts that you can bring to bear on any, any given problem. So there's a series of floor panels, just to quickly go through this, with uh, the volumetric component being the two bathrooms, back to back. Um, facades get fitted as big units, and then dividing walls, um, balconies added, and the process starts, starts again. All this is within a steel structure, which um, takes all the um, lateral and vertical loads. Essentially, the prefab components are infill, although there is um, an element of racing within some of the walls. Um, and they come, the units come complete, the floors come complete, including the, the, cantilevered, the cantilevered floor. There's a big gap in the center of the building, so essentially it's um, two steel structures um, in parallel with uh, a volume of um, going through the hotel and glass at the end of the corridor onto the Derwent River. But um, look, that's, that is it in a nutshell. That's a couple of examples of um, buildings um, we've done, buildings uh, we're going to do, and we're trying to apply it quite ambitiously to really, uh, really big projects. But large projects um, are different animals, as most of you know, working in this area. The forces um, are just... Uh, you know, lateral forces, um, compression forces, it's just a, it is a different, it is a different scale. But ultimately, we're confident that these, um, by, you know, I think the industry has to move in that direction for the, for the things I outlined before. Uh, builders um, want to make as much offsite as possible. And the question is, what is the best combination um, to do this with? So I hope that gives you some insights into our thinking and uh, thank you.